Time and again, tech enthusiasts like myself always remind people that using dual channel memory will increase the performance of your system substantially, especially those who rely on integrated graphics. But how much performance is that really? Can you game on a Ryzen APU with single channel memory and just four gigs of RAM no less? That's two separate questions, but we're gonna try to answer both today. So let's find out, shall we? Before we get into the performance bit, let's first explore what exactly dual channel memory is. In PC land, a computer system's memory is directly connected to a CPU's memory controller through a physical connection known as a memory channel. You can kind of think of it as a pipe or a highway that carries data between your CPU and RAM. The bus width of this channel dictates how many bits of data can be sent per memory clock cycle. So basically road lanes in this analogy. So wider channels can transfer more data per clock. In consumer PC architectures, which rely on double data rate or DDR RAM, the bus width of one memory channel is confined to 64 bits. So to access more throughput, you either have to increase the number of memory channels that a CPU can address, this is like adding more highways, or increase the memory clock, the speed of the car or the bits that's moving through the highway, both of which have their own limitations and advantages that is well beyond the scope of this video. With that in mind, most consumer platforms are capable of running dual channel memory, which increases our total bus width to 128 bits. Some platforms do let you go higher, like Xeon or Epic. But how does it actually impact performance? Well, as it turns out, it depends. I tested the Aspire 3 with its Ryzen 5 3500U running in single channel mode with 4 gigs of solder DDR4 RAM and an additional 4 gig SODEM with the same speeds to measure the effects that memory has on the system's performance. In theory, the 8 gig configuration has double the memory bandwidth than the 4 gig one. Oh, and also double the capacity. So it should perform significantly faster, right? Well, in my current CPU testing methodology, it was basically a wash, with performance between either configurations being within run-to-run -run variants of each other, due probably to the fact that these benchmarks aren't really that bandwidth or capacity heavy to begin with. Though that doesn't mean that the experience of using the system was similar on both sides. More on that later. And besides, there's much more to these APUs than just the CPU. So when we load up productivity tests on our iGPU, we get, whoa, 20% less performance in a single channel config with Geekbench's GPU compute benchmark and a complete demolition in Luxmark OpenCL. But even simple scenes like Luxbull HDR taking a 50% hit and more complex scenes being a third to a fourth of the performance of the dual channel configuration. That's rough. This could be one of two things. First is that the iGPU is being starved of memory bandwidth, which, as we discussed before in this obscure video, can be extremely harmful for a very parallelized architecture like a GPU. As a refresher, GPUs are extremely bandwidth hungry due to having many parallelized graphics cores doing any number of graphical calculations that need to be fed large amounts of data every clock cycle which is the reason why dedicated GPUs utilize GDDR or HBM memory, with their much higher throughput than the traditional DDR RAM, thanks to high clocks and much wider memory buses that can be well over 128 bits wide. Or it could be that our memory capacity just can't handle the amount of data being processed by the GPU, leading to system thrashing that contributes to our severe performance penalty. It could also be a combination of the two, so for now, let's move on to gaming. In both 720p and 1080p resolutions, with low slash performance settings, we are seeing an almost 50% reduction in FPS, moving from 8 gigs of dual channel memory to 4 gigs of single channel, taking us from somewhat playable in 1080p to very difficult to play and a stuttery mess, showing yet again how important memory is to integrated graphics performance. And given our lows in frame times here, we could also surmise that the CPU could also stand to gain from an increase in both capacity and bandwidth due to the fact that the CPU and iGPU share the same memory subsystem. 
With our results in tow, we can see that while CPU productivity performance may not be impacted that much, assuming that the task doesn't consume much memory, any task that touches the iGPU is going to be hamstrung by the limited memory bandwidth of single channel memory to some extent. And given that many GPU related tasks consume large amounts of memory, the meager 4 gigabytes could also be to blame. As a subjective evaluation, by the way, despite having a snappy SN550 NVMe SSD, Windows on 4 gigabytes of RAM is just not a great time anymore. Even at idle, the system regularly uses 2 to 2.5 two gigs of memory, which is well over half of our 4 gig configuration, especially given that the iGPU takes 512 megs for itself. The CPU performance does still brute force its way to make multitasking fairly responsive, but having like three to five tabs in a web browser while typing a document is not a good time. It's no wonder then that games suffer from this configuration, with a lack of available capacity and bandwidth preventing a capable APU from performing its best. So uh, yeah, run dual channel everyone. While not every task is going to completely benefit, having fast and responsive access to a large enough pool of memory is certainly a quality of life improvement. Probably one of the biggest upgrades you can give to your system apart from using a boot SSD, which we should test that. Get subscribed. Oh, and also 4 gigs of RAM is pretty hard to daily drive in Windows these days. So uh, yeah, it's low battery.